When the DWP assesses you for PIP, they apply what's called a points-based test. You need to get at least 8 points to get the standard rate of the daily living component, and at least 12 points for the enhanced rate, and the same applies to the mobility component. They add up points across 10 activities for the daily living component, and 2 activities for the mobility component. Let's take a look at the first daily living activity, preparing and cooking food. If you need an aid to prepare and cook food, you get 2 points. If you need assistance from another person, you get 4 points. And if you can't do it with help and need someone else to do it for you, you get 8 points. Aids includes things like an auto chopper, easy grip utensils or a perching stool. Help includes encouragement and guidance from others, supervision to stay safe and physical assistance from others. If you get less than 8 points on this activity, then you'll also need to get points on at least one of the other daily living activities to qualify. For example, you might get two points for preparing food, four points for washing and bathing, and two points for making budgeting decisions. That adds up to eight points, enough to get you the standard rate of the daily living component. The mobility component works in the same way. You can get up to 12 points on each activity, meaning you could get the enhanced rate on just one activity. For example, if you need someone to be with you when going to familiar places, or if you can't walk more than 20 meters, either aided or unaided. But if you don't get enough points on one of these activities, then you'll need to add up points from both of them to get the eight or 12 points threshold. The test looks at whether you can do these activities reliably. So, if you can do the activity but can't do it safely, well enough, repeatedly or in a reasonable time, then you still might get points. You need to show that you can't do the activity on more than 50% of days. So, as long as you need help on most days, you should still get points. If you know the points-based test, then it's easier to know what's relevant when filling in your PIP form. It's also really useful if you get a decision that you disagree with. So, you can challenge it by setting out the points you should have got and why. You can use the PIP self-test on the benefits and work website to help you decide how many points you should get. And don't forget to check out our other videos too.